Today in Your Money, regardless of our age, there is an area of financial planning that is often overlooked with potentially dire consequences. Here with us today is Jeffrey Massey, a certified financial planner professional to provide us with important information on beneficiary designations and how to avoid making those common mistakes. Thanks so much for being here, Jeff. Oh, my pleasure. I'm assuming talking about beneficiary designations is probably not one of your favorite topics. No, it's not one of our favorite topics, but as certified financial planners, it's a critical part of what we do because we need to make sure that we take care of those assets. Um, You've been in this business for a while. Have you seen any problems with uh, people naming beneficiaries? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the worst one that I can remember, there was a young firefighter, had a live-in girlfriend, named his girlfriend on his life insurance policy. Yep. That relationship ended. Short time later, he meets someone else, gets married. Shortly thereafter, he died. He never changed the beneficiary designation. So his ex-girlfriend got the death benefit, not his wife. And although it went to court, the court wouldn't change it because it was a direct beneficiary designation. I, I was going to say, there's, there's really nothing that can be done at that point, right? Exactly right. Um, one, one, you know, to, to point is to, to make sure you just check your, check your, your beneficiaries and whatnot, on, especially on insurance policies like yeah, this, right? And not just your life insurance policies, but on your retirement accounts, you know, your 401ks, 403bs, et cetera, your investment accounts, your bank accounts, et cetera. And you do that for two reasons. One, you want the right person to get that yeah. asset. And secondly, you do not want the asset to have to go through the probate court process, needless delay and expenses. Do you personally not recommend putting someone like a girlfriend or something like that on a... No, no, no. I mean, it's your choice who you put. Yeah. Just you want the right person. Yeah. So if you change girlfriends or change wives or husbands, whatever, you want to update your beneficiary designations. Now, I know there's, there's five areas that you want to cover, and we're not going to have time to discuss all five in, in detail, but what are some of the common mistakes that people can try to avoid? Some of the big ones are naming a beneficiary that's a minor, because okay. a minor cannot legally accept an asset. Okay. So that's a problem. Uh, leaving your retirement plan with your former employer because they might have limitations on the distribution as to how the heir can get that money. Um, another one would be if um, uh, on a second marriage. Um, you might name your second spouse as a direct beneficiary, say in an IRA, uh -huh. but you might inadvertently be disinheriting your children because now they have total control. So they could name their children on that asset instead of that money ultimately going to your children, which is probably what you wanted in the first place. And I think that's, that's the biggest issue right there. I think it's just always best to seek out someone like you to make sure all the bases are covered. Absolutely. Jeffrey Massey, right. thanks so much Thank for being you. here. For more information on avoiding beneficiary mistakes from Massey & Associates, just head over to foxprovidence.com.